Hi class, today we're going to be looking at section 1.4 of college algebra, which is complex numbers. Some of you may have seen imaginary numbers before or complex numbers, some of you might not have. So this might be new for you, um, but we will go through as much as needed, uh, I think, to give you a good idea of what complex numbers are. Uh, I will be defining the imaginary number i and what a complex number is. I will also be talking today about adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing complex numbers. Uh, remember any problems in the notes that I don't go over, you can find in our course calendar in the filled in note answer keys. All right, so starting here, we have the imaginary number is the square root of negative one. So anytime you have a square root of a negative number, you're going to have an imaginary number in there. Now, if your previous math teachers told you that you're not allowed to have negatives under the square root, really what they were trying to tell you is that it won't be a real number. We are allowed to have it, it's just an imaginary number. So a complex number is similar to imaginary numbers where we have uh, the form a plus bi. a is the real part and bi is the imaginary part. And we might have both pieces or you might just have one or the other, but all of those would be considered complex numbers. So just to kind of wrap up what i is as a definition, it's an imaginary number. i itself is the square root of negative one. If I take the square root of negative one and I square it, so for i squared, uh, the square and the square root cancel each other out. So um, the i squared ends up as just negative one. i cubed, if you think about i cubed, it's like i squared times i. So I get negative one times the square root of negative one or negative square root of negative one. This is getting a little confusing, but stick with me. Uh, and drum roll please, i to the fourth, which is the most useful one when we're simplifying these. If we think about i squared times i squared, we get negative one times negative one, which is positive one. So really all of that was to show you that Anytime we can take four i's out of our uh, piece, all the i to the fourth becomes one and it kind of just disappears, which is really nice when we're simplifying imaginary numbers. All right, so going down here, we're going to start by looking at adding and subtracting complex numbers. These are going to work very similarly to how we add and subtract anything with variables. Even though i technically is not a variable, um, math, a lot of rules in math tend to work the same way for lots of things. A variable is just in place of any number. So in this case, we're going to be looking at imaginary numbers. But uh, let's just, for example, take something like 4 plus x plus 5 minus 2x, for example. If I was going to be simplifying this, I could take let me use a different color, purple. I could take this number and this number because they're both uh, real numbers and, and constant terms without the variable, they are like terms. And I can combine those to be four plus five, which is nine. And then I could take the plus x and the minus two x, positive x and minus two x, and combine those to be negative 1x. So I can rewrite this as 9 minus x or 9 minus 1x. Adding and subtracting complex numbers works very much the same way. I'm going to leave A, problem A, for you guys to work on. I'll do problem B since it's a little more complicated for you guys. So I have negative 5 plus i minus negative 11 minus 6i. And what we want to do first, anytime we have a negative in front of those that grouping, we want to distribute that negative through. So I'm going to rewrite this as negative 5 plus i plus 11 plus 6i. Oops, i. Um, that negative times a negative, remember, makes a positive. So now I can do kind of the same thing. I can take the like terms here and I can take the like terms here and I can simply add them together. So negative five plus 11 is six plus and one I plus six I's are seven I's. So my complex number would be six plus seven I. So really similar to what we've done in the past with algebra. All right, moving on, 
to the next page, we're going to look at multiplying complex numbers. And very similar to what we just looked at, we can follow kind of the same rules and process as if we were just doing without complex numbers, just variables. Um, I can take 4x times 3 minus 5x, distribute that in. I would get 12x minus 20x squared. When I multiply, and, and if that was the problem, we would be done. We can't combine x's and x squared, so we'd be done. Uh, for imaginary numbers, there's going to be one extra step. But let's start by doing this process. So I'm going to start by taking this and distributing it to both pieces. So 7 times negative 2 is negative 14. 7 times negative 5 is negative 35i. And then I'm going to take, and I'm going to use a different color here, the negative 3i and distribute it as well. So I end up with negative uh, 3i times negative 2 is positive 6i. And negative 3i times a negative 5i is a positive. Negative times negative is a positive. 15 and i times i makes i squared. Now we have a couple things we need to do. First, this negative 35i and this positive 6i are like terms. We want to combine those and simplify. So negative 14 and negative 35 plus 6 is going to be negative 29i plus 15i squared. Now the other thing we want, and, and now if these were x's, we'd be done, but it's not. They are i's. And remember, i isn't a variable. i is a number. It's an imaginary number. And we learned at the beginning of this lesson that i squared equals negative 1. This is where this comes in. So I can replace the i squared with a negative 1 and simplify even more. I'll have negative 14 minus 29i plus 15 times negative 1. Now I can combine my two real terms here and here. Oops, I don't like how that crossed through my positive. All right, and I end up with, let's see, negative 14 and a negative 15, so positive 15 times negative 1, makes negative 29, and then minus 29i, and then I am done. So I have simplified that uh, complex number. Moving into dividing complex numbers is a little bit more complicated. And really what this is, um, <laughs> it's going to take me a few minutes to teach this one. We have a rule in math that states that we're not allowed to leave square roots in the denominators because i's are square roots. We're not allowed to leave any i's in our denominators of our fractions. So if I have something like 3i divided by 4 plus i, I can't leave the i in the denominator. So we need a way to get rid of it. And we're going to do that by using the complex conjugate. So coming up here, what is a complex conjugate, you may ask? Well, the complex conjugate of the number a plus bi is a minus bi. The real part, the a part, stays the same, but the imaginary part switches signs. So the complex conjugate of 4 plus i would be 4 minus i. What happens when you multiply these together, it's like magic, and it makes the i's disappear. So if I have 4 plus i times 4 minus i, I can multiply those together and figure out what that gives me. Now, up here, I used a FOIL method, distributing method. If that was a little confusing to you, you can use a box method to multiply any of these binomials or really any type of expressions. So I'll show you what that looks like. If I have 4 plus i times 4 minus i, I can use this nice box to organize my work. 4 times 4 is 16 plus 4i minus 4i. So I'm multiplying the outsides in. And then negative i times a positive i is a negative i squared. Now, if you notice, this piece and this piece are opposite signs, and they're the same thing. So they actually cross out. They cancel out, which is exciting. All right, so we end up with 16 minus 
I squared. Now remember, that was because I canceled out the other two things. I do wanna see all four of those pieces. Show me that you multiplied all four pieces before canceling those out. Now I squared, remember I squared is negative one. It's hard to remember every time, but we have to make sure we simplify that I squared. So this would be 16 minus, and I squared turns into a negative one. 16 minus negative one is 16 plus one, which is 17. And if you notice, the I's disappeared, magic. Super cool. Uh, so we can use this complex conjugate to get rid of that I in the denominator that we don't want. That whole problem, what that's gonna look like is this. So I'm gonna have three I divided by four plus I. I wanna get rid of that I in the denominator. So I'm going to multiply by four minus I, but I'm not allowed to just multiply by whatever I want all willy nilly. Uh, so I need to balance it out by multiplying by the same thing on the top. So really what I'm multiplying by is one. Multiplying something by one doesn't change it. Now, we could go through all the work and I'll show the steps, but we've already talked about it. On the bottom, four plus i times four minus i is 16 plus four i minus four i minus i squared. And on the top, I wanna take this three i and distribute it to those two pieces. So I end up with 12 i and then minus three i squared. Now we just need to simplify. So on the bottom, we already simplified this. Remember those two middle pieces cancel out. I get 16 minus, and then i squared turns into negative one. So on the bottom, I end up with 17. On the top, I have a 12i minus three, and then again, i squared turns into negative one. So I can change that and I end up with 12i plus three. Now, technically, if we want this in standard form, we want the real part first. So we'll wanna switch it to be three plus 12i instead of 12i plus three over 17. But if you are in my class, I don't care if they're switched. So you can leave it the way it was, but technically we want standard form to look like the one I boxed. I won't tell anyone. Okay. So uh, so that is it for that example. You guys can practice with example four. Again, make sure to try it on your own, then go to the calendar and see how you did by looking at the filled in notes. All right, last page. We're gonna do a little bit of performing operations. When the I isn't there, we're gonna input the I. One thing to note uh, in, Gosh, when we did positive square roots, if I had something like the square root of uh, three times the square root of five, I could make this the square root of 15. We were allowed to do this. This was okay. It's not okay with negative negatives in the square roots. So, we can't do that. If we do it, as you can see here, it ends up with a positive 10 scenario when in fact it should have been a negative 10 if you follow all these, all these pieces with eyes. So we wanna be really careful and just deal with the eyes and see what happens. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to rewrite this problem. And sorry for my double square roots. I'm not quite sure what happened with my notes here, but I'm gonna rewrite this as um, oh gosh, when we rewrite it with the I, it ends up doing, the I comes out in front. I can go into why, but I wanna try to make this video a little shorter. So when we pull the negative out of that root, it turns into an I, but it's no longer in the root, it's on the outside. So I root 18 minus I root eight. Now, the other thing is we're not allowed to add or subtract square roots unless they have the same part in the root. So I can simplify these roots and hopefully I get something that I can combine. So 18 is nine times two and the square root of nine simplifies to three and the square root of two. So the square root of nine is three. Remember, it's not the square root of three, it's just three. Similarly, uh, eight, we've got the square root of four times the square root of two, and that becomes two times the square root of two. So I can rewrite this as three i square root of two minus two i 
square root of two. Now notice I didn't put I three root two because it just doesn't feel as good. I three is, is not as nice sounding as three I. So that's the only reason why I switched the order. It just sounds better. Uh, all right. And now if you notice, it's kind of, so let me switch colors here. This and this piece are exactly the same. It actually makes these like a 3x minus 2x equals 1x. It's the same thing. 3i root 2s minus 2i root 2s equals 1i root 2. And we've simplified that problem. Next one is a little tricky. Students tend to get tricked by this one. We have to be careful. You cannot distribute a squared if there is a plus or a minus sign in your parentheses. What we need to do is rewrite this as negative one plus the square root of negative five times, squared means times itself, negative one plus the square root of negative five. And then before I multiply these together, I wanna rewrite it with my i's. So I'm gonna rewrite this as negative one plus i root five times negative one plus i root five. And then again, you can use a box method to organize this. It's a nice way to do it. I'm gonna just do it over here. So negative one plus i root five and negative one plus i root five. So negative one times negative one is positive one. Negative one times i root five is negative i root five. I've got another negative i root five. And then i times i is i squared times the square root of five times the square root of five is the square root of 25, which is five. So now if I rewrite what I have and I combine some of my, li well, I'll combine in a second. So I have one minus I root five minus I root five um, plus, plus <laughs> five I squared. Now I can combine these two like terms here. And I need to remember I squared can't be left as I squared. We've got to change that into our negative one. So I have one and then a negative I root five and another negative I root five makes two negative I root fives. And then plus five times a negative one, taking that I squared and making it negative one. Um, and then I am pretty much done. One and then positive five times negative one is negative five. One negative five is a negative four minus two i root five. Whew, that one had a lot of steps, but there is our simplified uh, expression. Last one here. Uh, if you wanna pause the video and try this one, I know it looks a little different, but see how far you can get on your own based on what I've already done. And then you can unpause and see how you did. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna note that there's no i in the denominator. So I don't need to use a complex conjugate or anything like that. I'm gonna have negative 25 plus, and I'm gonna pull that i out, i root 50 over 15. I need to simplify the square root of 50. So the square root of 50 is the square root of 25 times the square root of two, and the square root of 25 is five. So I get five root two. I, um, by the way, if you're my student in my class, I have another way of simplifying square roots, which is pretty fun and a little different and easier to understand. If you're confused and you need some help, let me know and I will show you my really cool method. All right, so we have a negative 25 plus, and then again, it's i times five root two. I'm gonna write that at five i root two, just cause it sounds better, divided by 15. Now, the only thing we have left to do is simplify. If you notice this term, and this term are both, and this term are all divisible by five. So I can divide, if I can divide everything in the fraction by the same number, then I wanna do that. If not everything will divide, then we can't. By the way, the square root of two doesn't count because it's in the square root. Uh, so it doesn't get divided by five. Even if it was a multiple of five, it wouldn't get divided. So I'm gonna divide everything by five. I have a negative five plus i root two divided by three to simplify that up. And that is the end of this lesson.